Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the Arizona Pain Network, where we bring you anything and everything educational for pain management. Today the topic is an overview of RSD and CRPS. Well, what exactly are RSD and CRPS? They stand for Reflex Sympathetic Dystrophy and Complex Regional Pain Syndrome. They are really the same thing, but the terminology changed back in the 90s although most people in the general public still understand RSD even though it's technically an outdated term. Both represent chronic pain neurologic syndromes that are very frustrating to both patients and doctors. The basic problem is that a person develops an overactivity of the sympathetic nervous system and this can result from trauma, surgery, or an unknown cause. In 1993, the International Association for the Study of Pain changed the name from RSD to CRPS to try and put better characterization and classification system to it. However, both terms are still used in the public. How common is the problem? It's a little bit unclear, but somewhere between 5 and 12 million Americans suffer from the problem. Three-fourths of those that are affected are female, and it's unclear why it occurs. We do know what I mentioned, overactivity of the autonomic nervous system, specifically the sympathetic nervous system. And the trigger, whether it's surgery, trauma, some kind of a bump or bruise, um, it just sparks it up and it doesn't shut off. So what are the symptoms of CRPS? Well, one can have severe burning pain that is very intense and much stronger than would be expected for the injury sustained. Okay, so you get some trauma, you expect to have some bruising and some pain, but this is pain that goes exponentially beyond that. And the pain tends to get worse over time rather than better like you see with a normal type of injury. Um, you can have pain that starts at the point of injury but then spreads to the whole leg or arm and it may even spread to the other side. A person can get significant sweating and swelling in the tissues, very extreme sensitivity, even with just like a sheet touching the skin can be very painful. And in later stages you can get bone and skin changes as well as insomnia and emotional problems. So there are three stages of CRPS. The first stage is the first few months, and that involves the skin temperature changes, some muscle spasms, severe burning pain. You might see hair and nail growth that is faster than normal, so you might have more hair on one, the affected side. And you start to get some beginning of skin changes, such as some blotchiness, paleness, shininess, sweatiness. And stage two is more the three to six months, where you start to get some more skin changes, some cracking of nails on that side, worsening pain, hair growth that actually starts to slow down, and then some weakening muscles and stiffening joints. In this picture, you can see some redness of the foot here, okay, and a little bit of atrophy of this leg. And the final stage is the one where you start to get some irreversible type changes, where you start to get muscle wasting, uh, entire arm or leg involvement, and even some limb contractions where it's been painful for so long and patients don't want to move it, they start getting irreversible contractures. Well, what is, are the treatment options for the problem? It's a very hard condition to cure because so many different things can lead and we don't exactly know what causes it that we just have a tough time curing it. But it can be slowed and reversed significantly. One of the things that can help is physical therapy. This can help to desensitize the skin area. Various medications that can help might include narcotics antidepressants, blood pressure medications, believe it or not, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, steroid medication, uh, neuropathic medications such as gabapentin and Lyrica, and even calcitonin, either intranasal or subcutaneous, can help reduce the pain. Uh, lumbar sympathetic or stellate ganglion nerve blocks, what you see here is a lumbar sympathetic block. This is the spinal cord here. This is actually the sympathetic chain on the right and the left side. Uh, surgical sympathectomy, where you actually take out the sympathetic nerves, a spinal cord stimulator, or an intrathecal drug pump. Uh, it depends on timing as to how well the uh, treatments work. Um, there was a large study back in the 80s in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery that showed that if treatment was started within two years of onset, you could get an 80% good to excellent results. So 8 out of 10 patients do well, and that's because we now have a lot of treatment options. Now, if treatment started later, 2 to 5 years, you can get still get good results, 70%, but the later the treatment, such as over 5 years, then you're only talking about a 10 to 20% good to excellent outcomes. 
There was another study done in 2004 looking at spinal cord stimulation for RSD and CRPS in over 50 patients, and it showed extremely favorable long-term outcomes for the condition. There were some minor complications, which are typical for spinal cord stimulation, such as potential infection or migration of the leads. Um, there was also problems in that study with spinal cord stimulation movement during motion. So when you go from a laying position to a standing, a lot of times the stimulator was not as effective, but the newer stimulators have solved that problem. So that's not an issue anymore. So the lumbar sympathetic blocks are the stellate ganglion blocks. This is looking at the neck, and this is where the stellate ganglion lays on the either side of the neck. And here's actually uh, and a needle coming in, you know, doing a stellate ganglion block. Um, and I already showed you a picture of the lumbar block, but basically it's an injection of anesthetic medications such as lidocaine into the ganglia area where, where the collection of nerves occurs. Immediately, you know it works if it warms the skin. Usually the, the indication is one degree Celsius. Uh, pain relief may occur within half an hour and it may last for days to weeks. A person may end up needing one to two blocks each week with about five to hopefully permanently relieve the symptoms. If it works and it just doesn't continue, then you can actually take the um, ganglia sympathectomy out and do a sympathectomy to get permanent relief. Well, what are the outcomes? As we mentioned, uh, the, the sooner the better with treatment. It's complicated uh, because we just don't know why it occurs. Um, really what you want is individualized treatment. It may take a combination of options. And what you want to do is break the cycle. There's a cycle where you have continuous sympathetic nerve activation and you want to stop that because if you do, then you can start to reverse some of the symptoms and get some pain relief. Arizona Pain Specialist has the leading pain management doctors in the valley with six locations. They take over 50 insurances along with self-pay and they really are a one-stop shop. They have medication management, interventional pain management, chiropractic, physical therapy, spinal decompression therapy, as well as acupuncture. The doctors have won the Patient's Choice Award five years in a row. For more information and scheduling, call 602-507-6550 and visit us on the web at preferredpaincenter.com. I'm Dr. David Green, CEO of the Arizona Pain Network. Your pain stops here.